So click Create New Site as soon as you're logged in. And while there are a lot of options here, we'll just select Other and then choose a template. There are lots of templates to choose from, but let's go into Create, Design, and check out the options. Wix offers lots of different templates that focus on different things. Most of these are set up to be multi-page websites, which can get a little complex if you're a beginner. So let's head to page three and select this template called Creative Studio. Click Edit, and Wix will begin to load up the template for you. I reviewed a bunch of templates before doing this tutorial, and I selected this one to show you because it's already set up really nicely. You're welcome to explore the others and see if you think they'll suit you, but this template has some features that make it really easy to work with. First of all, you see that the navigation links up here are divided into sections, which correspond to sections on this homepage. This template also has a hero project slider with a text title overlay, followed by a blurb that will work perfectly as an intro statement. Then we have a big gallery of projects below, which link to their own pages, and a small about section where you can include a photo. Finally, we have a contact section along with an optional area with client logos. I'll show you how to get rid of that if you don't need it. At the very bottom, we have a small footer with social links that you can edit and link up to your social sites. This template is good to go and all you really need to do is change the text, change the fonts and upload your images. I'll take a minute to show you what all these toolbars do. Up here is where you can view all the pages within the website. There's just one main page here and these are all the project pages. On this template, they've put up six projects. You might only need three or four, but if you click on a project page, you can see how you might make this work really well for you. This already has a great setup to show your project details with a big spanning image, text hierarchy set up for title and description, and a gallery of images below. Let's go back to the home page. If you want to see what your website looks like in mobile view, click here and it will show you a preview. In this view, you can make adjustments to the design that only affect the mobile view, which comes in really handy because on most website builders it's tough to change elements around without affecting both views. Often you need to do custom coding to allow that. Be sure that you save your site often. Autosave is turned on, but just to be sure, click here and the first time you save, you'll get to name your site. I named mine test B because I screwed up test A. Clicking here will allow you to preview your site without the toolbars and guidelines. You can see what the Wix banner ad looks like up here. It's a little distracting because of the bright purple, but I think it's worth the trade-off for a first-time website. This option is to hire someone to design your site, which we don't need because the whole idea here is to save money. But maybe if you're good at this, you can bring in some side income and charge your classmates to do their project for them. This link is really handy. It allows you to zoom out of the page and see the entire website as a project. You're able to duplicate sections if needed, move them around, and delete the ones you don't need. When you start with a template on Wix, you can't actually add brand new types of sections, but you can duplicate existing ones. So think carefully before you delete things, because it's tough to add them back in afterwards. If you're interested in building up your own custom page, you'll have to use a blank template. It depends how deep you want to go with this exercise. Over here is a toolbar of buttons that have website options. The first shows you the navigation of your website and how the pages are nested or connected. This little anchor link right here indicates that these are not separate pages. They are links that connect to sections on the home page. So if I go to preview and click on work, it doesn't open a new page, it scrolls to the work section. If I click about, it scrolls down to the about section. This is the difference between a one-page website and a multi-page site. On a multi-page site, these links would open up an entirely new page. On a one-page site using anchor links, you just scroll to a different position on the same page. Separate pages look like this. They have a page icon right next to them. The projects each have their own individual page, which makes sense because we wouldn't want those embedded directly on the homepage. We want them to have their own distinct layout. 
If you want to create a new project page based on this, you just go to these three dots and click duplicate. I'd recommend duplicating wherever possible so you can maintain the template graphic design. This button shows you background options for the page. You can have a color, an image, or a video. I would recommend keeping it simple with a white background to allow your work to stand out. The next button has a lot of website assets that you can add to the site. There are text hierarchies, images, shapes, buttons, and forms. You can easily get distracted with so many options. So if I was you, I would keep to the template for now, get all the information up and worry about tweaking things later. The other buttons here are not that relevant to this tutorial, but you can take a look through them on your own time. On the right hand side, we have a contextual toolbar. When you click an element on the page, certain options will become available here. You can copy, shift, delete, rotate, and see the size of elements you've selected. We don't need to worry about these options because we're going to keep it pretty simple. So let's go back to the home page and get started with editing. If you click this project name, you'll see a contextual menu pop up. This will be the same for every element and it'll take a little getting used to. Here we have edit text, animation, and help. If we look at animation, you can see a preview of these different options. This dictates how the element transitions onto the page when it's first loaded. Feel free to play around, but I like to stick to simple standbys like fade or float in. If we choose edit text, all of the options for text come up. We can select our fonts here and you'll see that there's quite a few popular Google fonts already loaded up. The fonts I'm going to use today are Futura and Botanica. I want Botanica to be my title font, so I'm going to scroll to the very bottom and click Upload Fonts. I'll just navigate to where my font is stored and select all three available options. These are open type and then two types of web font. Sometimes it's a bit unreliable how fonts show up, so I'm going to keep the open type one and delete the others since they appear to have display errors. The new fonts show up at the very top of the selection panel. I will change the size and edit the text to my first project title, Urban Nature. This little subtitle will be my secondary font, Futura. 16 is the minimum you want for web fonts, so I'll bump this up to 18 and then save the page. I need to add a slide to the hero slider because I have four projects, not three. So click on Manage Slides and then use the three dot menu to duplicate slide. Rename it to slide four and now I'm ready to go through and add my images. Click change slide background, then settings. This will bring up a media loader where you can select images from your computer. As soon as the file is uploaded, I'll change the tags. This is something you should always do as this can help people find your site through keyword searches. I realize that I want to change the color of this text. So let's click edit text again and go down to the color picker. I can select add color, then go to my coolers.co color palette and copy the hex code to paste into the custom colors panel. Now it will be available to use in my colors. I'll change the subtitle color too. I'm pretty happy with the way this slide looks, so let's move on to the next one by clicking this arrow up here. I'm going to speed through the rest of this part as the process will be the exact same as for the first slide. <laughs> 